Hi, this is Nick Eatman here at DallasCowboys.com, and we're talking injuries. One of the more common football injuries has got to be the ankle injury, and somebody that, that's very qualified in this, uh, in this field will be able to talk to us about that ankle injury. I've got Dr. Jeff McDaniel. He practices sports and family medicine at a Methodist Health System, where life shines bright. Now, we're going to talk about different parts of the ankle injury, but I really, I'm really i very interested in this high ankle sprain. It seems like 10, 15 years ago, you just if you had an ankle injury, that's all you had. But now you've got the high ankle sprain, and this one seems to be a, a very common injury and one that, that's, that's becoming more serious, though, especially for football players. You're right, Nick. Uh, it's interesting how, you know, years, several years ago, we just kind of heard about right. it's just an ankle sprain, but we've kind of found that uh, there's tends to be a different subset of uh, ankle sprains that uh, don't always get better in the traditional time frame that we used to think of. And high ankle sprains definitely fall into that group where they tend to not get better when we would expect high ankle sprains to get better. When we look at a high ankle sprain, what we actually see is that there's an injury to the ligaments that go between this tibia and the fibula. And that complex of ligaments we actually call syndesmosis. And that syndesmosis actually functions uh, to help uh, the stability between these two bones. And because it ends up being a little bit higher than the ankle joint itself, we get that term high ankle sprain. I know that uh, Bill Parcells, when he was here, of course, you know, he's from the old school, and he was just like, what's this high ankle sprain <laughs> stuff? It's ankle sprain. You should be out in, in a couple of, couple of days. Um, I've had some, some running backs even say that it almost seems to be easier if they just would have broken the bone as opposed to a high ankle sprain. It's, these things can be really tough to, to come back from. They can. They, they often uh, give us a challenge in management of them. Um, with any kind of soft tissue injury, it can take a little bit longer uh, to really heal and kind of gives that uh, impression that I'd rather have a broken bone. When we look at managing high ankle sprains, uh, you know, the best, and most people can get better with rice, you know, rest, ice, compression, elevation, but in more moderate to severe cases, uh, we may actually need to put them in either a walking cast or uh, a, an actual cast that puts a little compression here that helps heal those limits uh, in between that tibia and the fibula. In some cases, though, high ankle sprains can be a serious injury, uh, particularly if this syndesmosis is uh, completely disrupted. And that can actually set up a situation where uh, we have instability and widening at the joint level. In cases like that, sometimes surgery is actually necessary to correct that. So when you're dealing with football players and these high ankle sprains, the position they play should, should be a big factor in that. If you're a big lineman that's not going to be running a lot, maybe you could play in it more than you would, let's say, a receiver, cornerback, somebody that's cutting, running. Would the, does the position play a factor in this? It potentially could. Uh, you know, when we look at the mechanism of a high ankle sprain, uh, we often see it where if we have the foot in a position and the foot doesn't move, and we can actually have an internal rotation of this leg, which kind of creates an externally rotated foot, uh, it actually causes a force to cause these two bones, the tibia and the fibula, to separate, putting a stress on those ligaments that then cause that high ankle sprain. Now, like you said, we, you specialize in sports and family medicine, and you don't have to be a football player to have an ankle injury. Can you talk a little bit to, you know, everybody will roll their ankle on, on something, and especially me, I'm pretty clumsy, I can do that. What are some of the things that, that you can do that, at home to, to maybe, you know, like you said, with the, with the rice, uh, just, just to kind of uh, rehab that and, and without having to get surgery or go to the doctor all the time? Absolutely. Uh, you know, with a, a traditional ankle sprain, uh, you, you know, after we injure that, you know, the rice is a good first step, but then we also need to think about rehabbing it appropriately. Because without rehabbing it and strengthening it appropriately, we're going to set ourselves up for a re-injury. When we're at home, some of the things that we can think about is if we can write the letter with, uh, or write the letters of the alphabet with our foot. So we can kind of make an A, a B, a C, uh, to kind of get that uh, Cursive range of motion. or capital, or does it matter? Wh whatever you like. <laughs> Uh, and the other thing that you can do is if you get a towel or any kind of uh, resistance band and really kind of work on dorsiflexing and plantar flexing and really help strengthening up those muscles. Uh, so that way, again, we can try and uh, uh, prevent any uh, reoccurrence of injury to that ankle. Now, we'd like to say that we hope that uh, the Cowboys don't have ankle injuries this year, but 
it happens. That's the way it is in football and really all sports. But we really appreciate the information that you've given us today. Appreciate it for being here. That's Dr. Jeff McDaniel. He's from Methodist Health System, where life shines bright.